This is five on your side at six. Focused on you. Tonight, a big stink over unpaid rent in University City at the former Seafood City supermarket. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. The property manager and the business owner are headed for trial while crews removed thousands of pounds of rotten fish and produce just left behind. Our Justina Cornell was there today and joins us with the latest on this legal battle. Justina. Yes, yeah, so a Six Fortune LLC is suing Seafood City Incorporated, saying the business owner owes more than $300,000 in rent and fees. Now, while this is all happening in the last month, University City leaders stepped in saying they weren't moving fast enough and the smell was only getting worse. Cart after cart. Rotten products are dumped, finding a new home to deteriorate in. Each transfer wheels away whiffs outside. You can smell it right now, actually. I just got a whiff. Jessica Chu lives behind the Seafood City supermarket. The foul fumes have forced her to stay in the know. It's tons and tons of fish that are just sitting there rotting. So that's not, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> this is after 7,000 tons of fish, along with other produce, decayed inside for months after being left behind. Back in March, the St. Louis County Health Department ordered the business to shut down after saying some products were improperly stored and it operated without a health permit. The product that they were selling was not fresh and was not being kept at adequate refrigeration, which raises the possibility of all sorts of microorganisms, bacteria growing in the product. Webster University's biological sciences instructor, Dr. Julie Meringer, knows the possible dangers then and now. The rotten fish smell is an ammonia uh, contain or a nitrogen containing compound called triethylamine. Um, and it can be irritating to the respiratory system, to the eyes. As crews clean away, a lawsuit moves forward between the property manager and business owner. Six Fortune LLC is suing Seafood City Inc., claiming it owes more than $300,000. And the quarrel is beyond the courtroom. Chu now has new guests. Every day we have like 20 new flies come in. Mayor Ringer points to the problems inside. Most likely suspect, I would say, is probably flies uh, laying maggots in the dead meat. Um, and then those are going to eat the dead fish. Now, a spokesperson with the city said they've added extra police on site because some people were trying to steal food products from the dumpsters. The biology professor highly recommends not doing that. As for the legal battle, a trial date is set for October 23rd. An update tonight on a $52 million plan to transform Metrolink platforms and make them safer. We learned today what riders can expect to face as this project rolls out across the bi-state. And our Christine Byers met with Metrolink leaders today. She's live downtown to explain which stations will be getting the upgrades first. Christine. Mike and Ann, Metrolink stations like the one I'm standing in front of today are going to start to look and feel a lot differently over the next two years as Metrolink tries and continues its battle against crime. Security improvements on the Metrolink will include integrated fare collection gates, which means passengers will have to pay to pass through secure gates and fencing to board the trains. Kevin Scott, general manager of security for Bi-State Development, says these gates aren't the kind of turnstiles you can easily hop over or crawl under. All of these locations will be configured with roto walkthrough gates for large egress, ingress and egress for like for sporting events. The $52 million plan is being broken down into six phases to transform all 38 Metrolink stations, as well as the new one coming to Mid-America St. Louis Airport. So this is going to happen quickly. This first phase is $6.4 million. It includes stations in St. Clair County. That includes the Jackie Joyner Kersey Station, College Station, Emerson Park Station, and Washington Park Station. We need to make sure that the gating systems that we're using work, that the layouts of the fencing and our security dynamic of how we'll have to adjust works. Scott says more security cameras are also part of the plan. So we are going from about 800 cameras system wide to over 1800. All of those uh, feeds uh, are viewed real time in a real time camera center that just opened at our central facility uh, at Spruce, the Metro Central facility. And that means? If you trespass, if you come down between the fence, uh, you're going to be captured, your image is going to be fully captured on, on closed circuit television. Now, construction on the first four stations that are part of this plan is going to begin in about six to eight weeks. To find out which stations are next on the to-do list, 
Check out my story under the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Live outside the Metrolink station in front of Bush Stadium, Christine Byers, five on your side. Next week, Centene plans to start laying off 2,000 employees, about 3% of its workforce. That company is headquartered in Clayton. A report from Health Payer Specialist says the company is dealing with issues related to Medicaid renewals and Medicare Advantage Star ratings. The company released a statement that says, we routinely assess our workforce to ensure we have the talent and expertise necessary to support our members and the evolving needs of our business. Centene has not said how many employees in the St. Louis area are affected. A live look now at Enterprise Center. The Blues face the Columbus Blue Jackets in about an hour. If you're headed to the game, you can get a free flu shot. BJC is hosting a clinic until 8 o'clock tonight. Hockey fans could be dealing with some rain as they head to the game. Showers are moving into the region. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell has our weather first forecast. Yeah, we do have some thunderstorms out there, Mike. Some of them have been producing some sub-severe or smaller than severe size hail along with some gusty winds to about 30 miles per hour or so. Our weather first Doppler radar right now, as we kind of look into the metro area, you can see a couple of waves. One pushed just out of downtown through the metro east. That one's falling apart. The one down to the south had quite a history of some small hail from back along Manchester Road and Baldwin, back through Valley Park, and now it's down along 255, 270, and 55. So it's really a soggy drive coming out of the city once you get past Arsenal, 4500 block of Broadway on south. And then look at that storm to the north. How about that old Jamestown Mall getting drenched right now? Probably some small hail right along the Missouri River with this, about ready to cross over 67 as you head towards Alton. But that's about it for the time being. There will be more showers and thunderstorms. And again, the biggest threat, the downpours, a bit of lightning, and yes, some hail, like this nickel size hail from Colleen, one of our Weather Watchers on our Weather Watchers Facebook group page. We'll see you in just a few minutes, Sam. A Metro East Airport has reopened tonight after closing for roughly three hours this afternoon for a simulated crash of an airliner. It is part of training required by the FAA. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki joins us live outside Mid-America, St. Louis Airport in Mascouda with the latest on today's training. Holden. Well, Mike, I'm sure a lot of people driving by Mid-America today were curious why all those flashing lights were out on the runway. No, there was not an actual air disaster out here, but airport officials want local first responders prepared for the worst case scenario, and it's actually more common than you might think. Every year, more than 150,000 people fly out of Mid-America St. Louis Airport in Mascouda, but Tuesday afternoon, all air traffic was brought to a stop. We need to prove uh, to the FAA we have the ability to handle an air carrier emergency, specifically an aircraft accident. In order to meet FAA requirements, first responders practice responding to what's known as a hard landing. Bird strikes uh, occur a lot, and that's really what the precursor is to drive this uh, emergency is bird strikes. Takes out an aircraft engine, and then they have to come back around for an emergency return. Since crashing an airplane on the runway isn't a real option, first responders turn to Scott Air Force Base for help. You know, we have an aircraft, luckily, from the 126 Air Refueling Wing. So we have a target for us to set up around and provide uh, fire suppression. Uh, and then we're also using some, some items to simulate a fuselage so that we have emergency responders extricating uh, our passengers. By activating the Air Carrier Emergency Plan, Mid-America Airport Director Darren James says he's looking at more than how they simply fight fire. Is we need to make sure we have effective communication. So we want to make sure the right information gets to the right people at the right time. As airport officials review the training results, James says he's hopeful it's information they never need to use. Obviously, we never want something like this to happen at the, at the airport, but we need to be ready in case it does. Now, if you are traveling out of Mid-America Airport anytime soon, the good news here is the airport is reopened after that training wrapped up, and it will be three years before we see another training like this in our area again. Reporting live at Mid-America Airport, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side.